Welcome back to Home Spot, everyone. So today we have a lot of premium wood. Most premium you could possibly get. Ordered it straight from Idaho. Had it overnighted. Uh, no, totally kidding. But nonetheless, it is two by six material. Uh, it is actually pretty premium for it being just two by six material. They actually had two piles at the store. One of them was not so good. The second one, this one is actually pretty good. I've already double checked everything. Um, it's not perfect, but it is a lot better than usual. Uh, so we're gonna be taking this material, making an entry table out of it. Uh, we've actually needed an entry table for quite a while now. Uh, we just need something when we get home, we can just throw our keys, the mail, just certain things and kind of keep them out of the way. Now, obviously we're gonna make it look as nice as we possibly can. And that's pretty much all I have for you here. So let's take all this premium wood and let's get to work. All right, so up first, we need to kind of just organize ourselves here. So we want the nicer wood. Uh, for the top of the actual table, obviously we want to eliminate any and all of the knots or as many as possible. At least it's going to be pretty difficult, nearly impossible to eliminate all of them just because it, it's wood. It's going to happen. Uh, but nonetheless, right now we're just getting everything down to rough length, nothing exact as of yet. Uh, once we get our markings done, we move on over to the miter saw. Again, we get everything to rough length. And once we do get everything to rough length, you know, it's a good idea. Keep everything clean, keep everything as possible, as clean as possible, I should say, and move on over from there. All right, so once we have a, the length cut to where we sort of need it, now we need to work on the width here. So as of right now, we don't have a clean edge to start with, so we need to make that clean edge. And the way I'm doing it here is I made this lead to Hold the wood as I push it through the blade, you know, perfectly still. That way it gives me a nice straight edge to work with. Now this is an important piece here. Um, I need to have every single piece of wood that I have cut down to exactly four inches wide. So I set my, my fence to four inches and run every single piece of wood through here, whether it be small, whether it be a leg, table piece, uh, bottom shelf, regardless of what it is, four inches wide. Moving on, once I have all of my boards cut to exactly four inches wide, I need to move to making my tabletop. Now, obviously, if it's only a four inch board, it's not very wide. Uh, so I need to glue up four pieces of board uh, together here. So I'm gonna use the dowels to hold them in place and just keep it as flush as possible. And once I'm done with drilling all of my holes, I move on over to actually cutting out my dowels. Now you can definitely buy your own dowels. That's not too big of a deal. They're not too expensive, uh, but you can just make them yourself. Just buy a big that dowel, cut it down to size. Then we move on over to dry assembly just to make sure everything fits, make sure all the, the holes line up correctly here. And this case looks like it does. So we move on over to actual glue. Uh, so slap on some glue, smother it around, Put your dowels in and keep on moving and honestly clamp it down and let it dry for a little while. Actually a long while. I should also mention, once you do clamp everything down, you will get some glue squeeze out. You do wanna take a damp rag and just wipe any excess off. It'll save you a lot of time on the back end. While the glue is drying on the bottom shelf and the top, we move on over to cutting everything down to length. All of the legs, all of the side rails. All right, just get everything cut down to exact length. Once we have everything down to length, it's time for some marking here. So again, we're gonna continue a little bit with the dowels. So we're gonna put a, two dowels in every single joint here. Uh, we need to make sure this is as, as close and as accurate as we can possibly get it. And you can kind of just see it laid out here, how it's gonna be uh, laid out. Two, one to the one, two to the two, three to the three, four to the four. So pretty straightforward. Once we have everything laid out, we do move on over to more, more dowels, more making holes. Uh, it's pretty much rinse and repeat for the entire process. So 
so once we have all of our holes drilled out, we have all of our dowels cut out, it's time to move on to a little bit of dry assembly. And all we're really doing here is just making sure that everything lines up properly, making sure all of our holes are drilled correctly. Uh, just check everything twice. The better the fit here, the less work you have to do later on. Now that we know that our dry assembly is good to go, we move on over to the top and the bottom shelf. Uh, we need to get it down, uh, we need to get it cut down to final length. And the easiest way that I know how to do it without running it through the table saw uh, is just getting a straight edge and running up, running your circular, circular saw right up against that straight edge to get a nice, even, smooth cut. Uh, same thing, flip it over, do the exact same thing, make sure everything's nice and square, and just run your circular saw right through it. Okay, so now that the tabletop and the bottom shelf are done, it's time to move on over to sanding. And I know this is everyone's favorite task here. Uh, so I'm gonna drag this on for about three to four hours here. So, you know, have fun watching the next three to four hours. No, totally just kidding. Uh, with a little bit of editing magic, I dropped it down to about two minutes. So I hope you enjoy the next two minutes here. It's actually pretty nice to watch when it is in super, super fast motion here. One thing I do want to mention about sanding here is once you think you're done, especially with the top and bottom shelf, I like to take a, just a, a very damp cloth and run it over the entire thing just to kind of like raise the grain up a little bit and take one quick final sanding at either 220 or higher grit sandpaper just to make it you know that extra smooth is and it totally comes out in the finished product. All right, once sanding is complete, we move on over to pretty much the last, well, second to last uh, step here. Uh, and it's honestly gonna be my favorite step out of the whole process, and that's putting on the actual stain. Um, I did two coats. I, I did want a very dark stain itself, so I left it a little bit longer than I probably should have, uh, just in hopes of keeping it as dark as I possibly could. Okay, so I did let the stain dry for about two to three days, and then I moved on over to actually sealing it here. So I'm using some polycrylic to seal everything, um, specifically some semi-gloss polycrylic, and I like it so far. I uh, didn't really care for the foam roller. Um, I did end up using my spray gun to actually spray it. It just left a much smoother surface. Um, I didn't film it, but nonetheless, I did do the last coat with the spray gun. So on to the last and final step here finally, 
and it's time to just put everything together, glue it all up, do whatever I need to do for the finishing touches here. Okay, and so I don't have clamps that are long enough to reach. Even my longest clamp was just like literally an inch too short. So I had to think a little outside the box here and get a little bit of creative. Um, I do have some ratchet straps that honestly worked. I, I was trying to be a little bit easy with them. I was afraid that they were gonna just uh, mess up the edges of the wood, especially on the legs themselves. But Overall, it looks like they, you know, they didn't do any damage whatsoever. Again, I was pretty easy with them. I put enough pressure for the glue to grab, and that's about it. Um, and once we have everything clamped up, you know, do definitely go over it with a damp rag, get all the extra glue squeeze out out, and you should be good to go. All right, everyone, so we're done with the project. So, just take a peek around here. It looks pretty nice. I like that it's really dark. That's exactly what I was going for. The darker, the better. Um, again, it's all two by six material. I would say out of pocket cost, about 50 bucks. You could have probably got in a lot cheaper if you went with the cheaper material. I decided to go with the more expensive material just because it's less of a hassle. Uh, $30 compared to $50, not too big of a deal. So I went with that. Overall, every single thing is cut down uh, to four inches. Made it as simple as you can possibly make it. And it's actually very sturdy for that matter. I can sit on it, I can have, I bet you would hold a thousand pounds, no problem. Uh, but nonetheless, there it is. like the build as always please browse the channel like subscribe and we'll see you all next time